Hey ladies and gents, we are back with another game in the Falk Wolf 190D. Actually, that's first thing. Other than doing a review, this is the first replay we've ever had with the Falk Wolf uh, 190. Uh, and we just had a BF 109 game, now we have a Falk Wolf game, uh, the, 190, the 190D, the tier 7. Um, this is Casp Corp. Uh, he is playing in a. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a German multi role. It's not one of my favorite uh, aircraft to fly. It has some. Fucking massive cannons, 230s, 220s, uh, and a couple machine guns. However, uh, in Wargaming's um, history, I guess, uh, somehow this got shoehorned into a multi role. How, I don't know. It was designed to be better in all ways possible over the BF 109. Uh, in this game, it has no altitude, um, or piss poor altitude. Um, and speed and yeah, it's it just it's just not what uh, in real life what this aircraft was. But um, being that this is war gaming, uh, they shoehorned it shoehorned it into the multi role, and it uh, you, you have to play with what it is. However, Casp is going to be all over everybody's shit in this game. Picks up the A6 M2, M230s, M220s, just do a number on everything. He's got boom one bomb he drops on the target there. Let's see if he nails it. Didn't quite get it all. However, he finds the ME2652. And being a multi-roll, this is kind of what a multi-roll does real well, which is, of course, uh, nails the uh, GAs. However, he gets uh, kind of um, sniped from a little ways away by a TA-152. Uh, yeah, which are, uh, in general, kind of a pain in the ass. But there's not much you can do against two thirty millimeters that have, you know, a 1,000 meters range plus. So he's back in again, and he's heading back over here. He's got the TA-152, which is in a uh, specialist configuration. Go figure. Somebody likes their TA-152s. Uh, he, however, decides that, you know what? I'm not going to fight over the middle. Really, really smart move there. Uh, he is going to go work on these other objectives here and try to start taking them. Uh, the other team has completely ignored their um, command center and... Uh, and doesn't seem to be interested in taking it here. So he's going to move over here. He's going to start working on this objective here. Pulls down, nails the objectives, get his grade 5 multi roll. And now he's going to think about maybe, yep, the red's kind of cleared out of the center here. Maybe it's time to go back to center. Uh, they've almost halfway got the uh, blue um, the uh, mining facility, uh, which is looking pretty decent here. However, there's a couple red planes over there. Uh, the TA-152 is taking up the uh, buffet position. Uh, he's got multiple plates in his hand. Uh, and he looks like he's been feeding quite well uh, off the uh, the blue players here in the center here. And I'm not sure if uh, Cash is what he's going to be doing here. It looks like he's looking for at least trying to pick up some... Um, pick up some uh, defense spots. However... He does fight the TA-152. However, the TA-152 is kind of a smart cat. He puts her into a dive uh, and starts to run away from Casp. Uh, TA-152 has got some insane speed, uh, especially when it gets a little bit of altitude and then starts diving. So he drops down here. He's going to start picking up his first target here. Uh, puts a couple shells into that. Doesn't have to uh, drop his bomb on that. He's got a few more here. Uh, he's got his bomb coming through here. Uh, he didn't drop his bomb. That's all right, though. He's going to save that. Oh, he did drop his bomb. I'm sorry. It's a little bit off, a little bit late. Uh, picks up the J4M going through. And uh, Ota, he didn't quite get the altitude to keep up with him. Uh, and now he's looking for whatever he can shoot down uh, relatively close. Finds a J4M, and he starts working on him. They flip the uh, center objective here. They're up 2-2 two to two right now. Uh, being that this is the center with the, um, the, the heal ability... Uh, he drops down, picks up some heel, finds the BF-109, the, the, the Z model, uh, which is always a pain, because that, that does have 430s, and that is super derpy, uh, has a tendency to just fucking end your life uh, in one pass. Uh, gets on the BF-109, um, one of the few planes that he can outmaneuver, <laughs> the BF-109 Heavy. Uh, finds the BF-109, finishes him off. Uh, the BF-109 and Z was down really low, I and mean, we're talking 1,200 meters here. Uh, which is a no-go zone with the uh, heavy fighters. Picks up the P-47N, Irvin, 
Um, gets down on his tail. I'm, I'm, I'm almost positive he can actually out turn a B-47N too. <laughs> Puts him up 5,005. They're sitting at uh, 129 to 147. The enemy team finally gets up the uh, command center. Picks up the Yak-9U here, see if he can finish them off. Oh, finishes off the Yak-9U, pulls around, and he's got the Hornet right there in front of him. Uh, and those 230s and those 220s just just don't care, right? <laughs> he's up to about 1,800 meters, uh, and he's looking for his neck target here. He's heading over here to the mining facility. Um, maybe if he can clear out some of these uh, red players here, because there's, ooh, three GAs. This should be interesting. If he can knock out all three G GAs over that mining facility, uh, he's going to go a long ways to uh, turn this objective here. He's got really good map awareness. Um, he's in the plane, a good plane for doing this. Uh, how, like I said, once again, multi-role, large cannons, finishes off the uh, the GA, starts turning it blue, uh, and now he's going to drop down here on the next GA. Uh, yeah, there we go. ME3265, or ME265, doesn't really have much of a chance against this thing. Uh, Feathers his guns out nicely. Oh, puts a nice big smoke on it. Uh, he's got one more GA to deal with here. Uh, and he's already made his bombing run, so if he can finish this GA out. Oh, his bots did the, did the, uh, did the business. Finishes off the objective here, and now he's up to 3-2 to two here. Now, however, he does have the mining facility, which is a huge deal. Uh, we're talking, you know, it's worth two. Uh, the other team's TA-152 is at 7,800. He's at about 9,600. However, the other bombing, the bombers have pretty much made it through there without any uh, any sort of uh, consequences. So, now he's heading back here toward, and he's going to see if, I think he was trying to think if he could make it over to that bombing formation, but I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Uh, he does have a lot of red here in the center, and it'd be really nice. Uh, there's a possibility right here now they could flip this two objective flip here in a matter of just a few seconds here. Picks up the P-47N, but nope. Uh, Cass says no, we are not going to let that happen. Finds the TA-152 coming through here. They finish him off. They flip the back total blue now. Uh, and now he's got the TA-152. Finishes him off. Ends the reign of the, uh, the sniper here. He's got the ME-265. Which is just perfect for this aircraft. Like I said, not a great turn and burner. Uh, however, with those big 230s and 220s, uh, it works really nice for finishing off GAs here. Uh, he's got the uh, ME265 straight of, uh, I'm sorry, off, yep, straight ahead of him here. Gets in on his tail here. He needs this kill to keep this objective running. Pulls in. Come on, come on, come on. Finish him off, Cast. He only got a little bit of time. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Finds the next ME265 too. Is also hurting. Flips him again. Turns it even more blue. One more to go. He's got the Hero of the Sky badge. Grade 1 multi-roll. Well done. Focke-Wolfs are not easy aircraft to fly uh, for, the, for the most part. Um, they they kind of have not much for ground ordnance. I mean, they have, two, they have rockets and some bombs. But, uh, you know, it's not the easiest thing in the world to play this plane. Uh, but he is doing a hell bang-up job here. Picks up the P-51K. Um, tries to get a couple shells in there. Oh, nice job. Gets two thirties to hit. Uh, and just pretty much ixnays him. Uh, sits in, sitting at about 13,000 right now. And they are sitting 509 to 447. Uh, right now they are pretty much tied uh, with the mining facility having uh, being worth two. Uh, so there's a pretty good chance here if he can keep this up here. But since the squall line is up, uh, if he can start falling some of these planes, uh, they have no chance. They, 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 the red team needs four objectives uh, to start making up. Uh, lost time here. So he pulls down, starts looking around here. He's got the bomber flight coming in. Uh, I'm curious if he's going to take after the bomber or if he's going to start to drop here on the red player. Finishes off the Horton, uh, Hornet, sorry, uh, and leaves him in perfect position to drop here in the bomber formation. Uh, this thing has just enough altitude to deal with this, and of course it has more than enough fucking firepower uh, to wax some bombers here. Pulls in on the bomber formation. Uh, as long as he can keep that uh, mining facility running, they got the game. Uh, and that's exactly what he's doing here. Picks up the Wing Legend with 14,000. Uh, this is a textbook just absolutely paying attention to what's going on on the on the, uh, on the the battlefield. He gets his ace. He's got the uh, last bomber just a little bit ahead of him here. 
starts putting out the 30s and the 20s. Oh, look at the big HP numbers coming off. Finishes him off. Two planes left. Yeah, what a great game by Cask. Like I said, this is just textbook of paying attention to what's going on. Um, there was a couple tight moments there, but he uh, dropped on objectives when he needed to. He defended other objectives when he needed to, uh, which let him, um, yeah, just simply, uh, I shouldn't say, yeah, yeah, no, dominate. Uh, I, I mean, that's what he did with his gameplay here. Uh, he was the deciding factor in this game. Um, more than anything, you can't, you can't, bots, nothing like that. This was entirely up to cast, uh, and he did everything that needed to be do, everything that needed to be done to win. Um, pulls around, picks up the last kill on the P47N, 16,575 uh, personal points showing, gets his first class, and ends up with a 17.5 and a shit ton of medals. That is an excellent game. I'm gonna give you a, I'm giving you a clap right now, cast. That was, that was fucking awesome to watch. So thanks for watching, guys, and have a good night.